How are you guys doing? Today we're going to be doing the 2013 AMC 10B Problem 22. Again, this problem was done by request. I'm not quite sure how much longer I will do requests in this fashion. Um, I might add it to a Patreon level, like, I don't know, people who support it, $3 a month will be prioritized with their requests over people who aren't patrons or whatever. I don't know, I'm still thinking about all that kind of stuff, but for now, I don't mind doing it. It, uh, it just it helps me select what I'm gonna teach next on the test. So this problem was done by request. Only other thing is, yeah, the whiteboard that I ordered should be arriving at the earliest this Saturday. So I'll let you know, of course, when that happens and that'll make uh, me able to film two or three times a week or a lot more often, perhaps even nightly. You know, I don't think I wanna do it that often, but we'll see what happens. Here we go. The regular octagon, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Oh, one last side note. I think I am gonna get a projector so that when I get the new one, I can project it onto the screen um, and then maybe not have to write it. So we'll see, I'm gonna look into that and see how it works. Okay, regular octagon, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, has its center at J. Each of the vertices and the center are to be associated with one of the digits, one through nine, with each digit used once in such a way that the sums of the numbers on the lines A, J, E, B, J, F, C, J, G, and D, J, H are all equal. And how many ways can this be done? Okay, so it might be, again, you kind of feel overwhelmed. It's problem 22. You kind of almost want to give up just then because like I've never done one this late, perhaps, if that's you. Um, but we just kind of got to give it some thought. You'll notice that J appears in all of these, right? A to J to E. So it's not really the most important part. What really matters is that A and E, B and F, C and G and D and H add up to the same amount. Whatever that amount is, it has to be that if I take the sum of the numbers one to nine, and that would be N times N plus one over two, memorize it, the triangular uh, numbers formula, also an arithmetic series formula. If I add that up for nine, I'm gonna get nine times 10 over two is 45. So it has to be that when I subtract J from 45, the result is always divisible by four. So let's just focus on what J could be then. The first thing you could subtract is one because that gives you 44 and each of the values of these two letters would add up to 11, 44 divided by four. The next one you can subtract is five, and that would give you 40. And finally, you could subtract nine to get 36. These are the only possibilities. So then J can take on the values one, five, and nine. Okay, so J equals, right? One of these three it isn't actually equal. It's an element of the set, uh, but we don't really care. We're just kind of writing what we, helps us think. Okay, so I'm gonna erase this. Um, now we can just think, all right, if J is one, right, then as we said, A and E, B and F, C, G and D and H are gonna have to add up to 11. Let's just write all the other numbers, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Wasn't this just like the Gaussian way of adding? You just take first and last, second and second to last, third and third to last, and the two middle. Those are always gonna add up to 11. That's kind of how it has to work. So basically, uh, it would be, how can I assign, let's just take these pairings, right? Two with nine, three with eight, four with seven, and five with six. For the scenario where J equals one, again, if, you're just doing what if. What if J equals one and explore, right? You just have to kind of give yourself new information that you might not have perceived until you play what if. So if J equals one, these are my scenarios for these four values or sums. Well, let's just focus on letters A, B, C, and D. Because if I can select the letters A, B, C, and D, it will automatically default the other selections of these. For example, if A is two, it forces E to be nine. So then basically once I've chosen all of these values, I don't need to worry about what these are. They're not gonna be different, okay? Um, it'll just be as long as A, B, C, D's selection is different, I will get a different arrangement. Okay, so uh, how many ways can I do this? It's four factorial. 
right? I basically have four choices for A. It's going to be uh, A and E would be this one, for instance, and B and F this one, and C and G this one, and D and H that one. However, you might have already thought of this. For each of these selections, which one is A? I have two choices for that selection. I also have two choices for this selection for which one's going to be B, two choices for C, and two choices for D. So I'm going to have to multiply this by 2 to the 4th, 1, 2 for each of these choices that we had to make. Right, by fundamental counting principle, these are two different events. The first event is the selection of the arrangement of the orders of these. The second event is once they're arranged, which one is A and which one is E, and there's always two ways to arrange that. Okay, so based on fundamental counting principle, we're going to multiply right here. All right, that's only if j equals 1. What happens if j equals 5? You should be able to see it's going to work exactly the same way, except you'd have 1 with 9, 2 with 8, 3 with 7, and 4 with 6. It's the exact same thing. You're again going to have this. So basically, for each of the choices of j, I get this, which means I can just multiply 3 times all of this. Now, 3 times 16 is 48, 4 factorial is 24. Don't multiply this straight up. Come on, split the 48 into 2 times 24, and then you can make it 24 squared, which you should have memorized. Come on, you're preparing for the AMC 10 trying to qualify. Have the first 30 perfect squares memorized. Every edge you can get. 24 squared is 576, 2 times 500 is 1,000, 2 times 70 is 140, we're at 1,140, 2 times 6 is 12. That's going to be answer choice C. I'll see you guys in the next problem.